Hey, Rick and Sean, how are you? I'm good. Great. How are you? Thank you? Good, good. Just hanging out in um, actually the studio that helps produce this show. So smoked a lot of cigars today, and this probably will not be my last of the night. Good, good. Could be worse. Could be worse. Yeah. It definitely could be worse. Although this is probably, I don't know what you guys think, like my 15th cigar today. <laughs> 15 lighting cigars. You, you didn't you need to explain that, too, because you light, talk about that light, put that cigar down, light another one. So you're constantly smoking, but not yeah. 15 no, full cigars. No, probably not 15 full cigars. It's probably, you know, I'm smoking about half to three quarters of each one, oh, wow, wow, especially wow. during okay. the photo shoot ones, because you want like a lot of smoke and stuff. So I'm smoking them very quickly. And I was like, oh, I need to slow this down. <laughs> so um, today we're going to be talking about travel. Um, oh, also, welcome to Behind the Band, the show where we talk about everything and nothing, mostly just cigars, right? We have to do our intro. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I know that we were kind of greasing the wheels here to talk about travel because we're all travel starved. You know, for me, it's nice to be on the road this week, Rick. I know you're doing a little traveling, Sean. I know you've been trying to get out there a little bit, but um, I just kind of want to go over some, you know, like ins and outs of travel, some tips and tricks, some crazy Uber rides, or do we actually use airport lounges? So I'm sure that we could talk for literally days about travel, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yep. So I'm going to start out this and ask, do you guys, I know they're not super prevalent, but like, do you guys actually use cigar lounges at the airport if you ever see them? No. No, I don't because uh, they're filled with uh, cigarette smokers constantly. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, 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 you know what? Bad on me that I'm pointing those guys out, but uh, uh, but uh, usually, uh, usually I have no time. So yeah, yeah, okay. yeah and I know it's yeah, it rare. I mean, it's just, that has them. It's just a connection, and even if you got a layover, it's not really enough time to really get into cigar and relax. That's the whole point of smoking a cigar, not being rushed. So for me, it it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't work. Actually, the first time I ever used an airport lounge was when I was coming back from Richmond after my orientation, when I started, because um, I actually just hit my four year anniversary with the company um, a couple days ago. And uh, thank Happy you. Happy anniversary. <laughs> great <laughs> hire, a great hire, a great hire. Thanks, Rick. And I remember coming back and going through Atlanta and there were some crazy storms and I found an airport lounge. I was like, well, this is crazy. I didn't know these still existed. And my flight was super delayed. So I had like four hours to kill and I was able to actually go like order food and a drink and smoke a cigar. And it was pretty cool. And I remember talking to this dude next to me. He's like, oh, this is the first time I've ever flown. I was like, ever, ever, ever. You've never ever? flown before. Ever? And like, yeah. And we're going through a storm. And I felt really bad. I was like, I swear it's not always this much. He was 10 years there. old, right? He was 10 oh, years old in the smoking lounge, right? He was like in his 40s, maybe. Wow. wow. So yeah. Wow. And now if you, and part of the reason I don't like to use cigar lounges in the airport is because I kind of feel guilty getting onto the plane and then just reeking of a cigar. I agree. So I agree. You guys have like any... Not often do I leave directly from an event and then get on a plane, but like I always put an extra shirt like at the top of my suitcase and I like go and change um, to the best of my ability. And then I use like a deodorizing spray, like a neutralizing spray. Do you guys have any like recommendations for people who are traveling if they want to sort of like alleviate that issue? So I use, um, I use the downy spray. Um, and of course, Febreze makes one for fabric as well, but I like the downy because it, it, it's also a de-wrinkler, so, um, which is great if you're traveling, period. You know, it just kind of right. uh, helps neutralize any, any odor, cigar smoke or otherwise, but it also helps, you know, keep the wrinkles out. So um, yeah, I use that a lot. I use that a lot. But it's rare that, um, that I have to go straight from an event yeah, to I agree. the airport. I agree. Um, and that's happened on occasion. Um, you know, and I, I just, I just, say, hey, you know, if you, you sit next to me, you got to muscle through it. <laughs> it's, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I won't have time. If it's that tight, I just won't have time. It tends to happen on that Saturday event in the daytime that we have the opportunity to fly home yep. after the event. But, you know, like I agree with you, Sean, uh, the chances that we are going to be able to do an event and to catch that 10 o'clock flight is, you know, that didn't happen. So yep. what I do is just get on the uh, plane and the guy that sits next to me, I lean to him and says, do you think uh, somebody's smoking cigarettes in the plane? 
I smell that. You know, I smell that too. I think of that lady right there. And it, he's, I mean, eyeballing this lady like all yeah. the time. It's like, yeah. Just I saw a pack of Marlboro fall right? out of her purse. Oh my God. I remember I was boarding a plane once. We were on the jet bridge and there was a dude like three or four people behind me. And he's like, you smell that? Do you guys smell smoke? Are you allowed to be smoking around here? And he's like asking the people around him if they smell smoke or if he thinks someone's smoking near the plane. And I'm like crawling into a hole, like, please don't notice that it's me. So we get on the plane and this dude sits right next to me. Like he just happens to be in the seat directly next to me. And so we kind of start chatting and he's asking what I do for work. And I told him, and it's like this moment of clarity. And he goes, Oh, was you? It was you? <laughs> so you're what I'm smelling, and I felt so bad. I mean, cigar smoke I think is less offensive smelling than like stale cigarette smoke. And again, not trying to like go after the cigarette community, like right. to eat their own. But I just I think cigar smoke. And to the to people's credit, they do know it smells like cigars rather than cigarettes. They're like, oh, I agree. It smells like cigars. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's so uh, time out, guys. Time out. Uh, Sean, Laura, what are you smoking? Ah. Uh, Cleaver Royale. Ooh. Okay. I love that cigar, Sean. That is like love legitimately it. one of my favorite Cohibas. I can not put a box of those cigars in my humidor outside for the guys because that is the go-to cigars uh, when I have that cigar in the garage. I said, bro, there's some CAOs on the shelf too. Cohiba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen! This is this is this was this was really a a, a fun project from, from start to finish. Just just being able to uh, to make the cigar at at, at Hatsa in, in 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 Honduras. First time we ever, of course, you guys know, first time we ever did a Cohiba at the Hatsa factory in Donnelly, Honduras. So it was just great to work with uh, Augustine and the team down there, and and use the, this great tobacco from Hamastran Valley and uh, Jalapa Valley, in Nicaragua. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice stout full body cigar and, uh, and you launched this cigar uh two years ago no this 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 came out this is this is this is the pandemic release man this is the international okay. pandemic okay. release right here man okay. yeah we yeah but we ran straight into the rona with this We're to be fair the last pandemic, everything feels like it was literally years ago yeah yeah but i, I thought yes, I, it was no, uh, it officially launched in may officially in may yeah, because we're at the factory together because yeah, I was working on Bones. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for your input on Bones and the presentation and what the presentation was going to look like until we presented to you. And he says, no, nah, I wouldn't do that. And uh, uh, to uh, tell the fans, we had a, uh, a skeleton uh, on the uh, thing and uh, everybody said uh, to us, uh, Sean says, do away with the skeleton on the box. You can do it on your table, but I wouldn't uh, do it in the box. So anytime you open that box and you see that lid that has the smoke, that was going to be a skeleton. And uh, uh, Sean says, yeah, I wouldn't do that. And we're so happy we didn't do that. No, great, 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 great cigar. I, I didn't want the first impression okay. that people got of the cigar with the skeleton. It's, it's, it's a terrific cigar. No. Yeah, it really is. If you're looking for that quintessential, just like cocoa, coffee, noted, just rich Maduro, the bones really is where it's at. And it's got that really nice sweetness to it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, so I'm smoking, actually from Honduras as well, the Inspirado Orange. What about you, Rick? Nice. You know, classic. Uh, I, I'm smoking the uh, Sopranos or the Contiguity. Uh, huh. I haven't smoked in that cigar in about uh, two or three months. And okay, you know, Dude, that was that was one of the coolest ever. I remember when, when that cigar first hit the market. I mean, it was just like that was just the the, the coolest packaging. Obviously, how, how could it not be cool? It was just attached to to one of the most iconic uh, uh, shows ever in the history of television. But I mean, yeah. it, it it was just it was executed flawlessly, man. And uh, I haven't smoked one of those in a while. I might need to hit you up, actually. Bro, I love that. You know what? We all know that we can order any cigar. So pick up because this is the original blend because they changed that blend to use in uh, to the running of that blend because the the wrapper they the choose for the first go around they didn't grow anymore. So they changed it from Brasilia to Connecticut Broadleaf, and that that uh, that 
that uh, filler didn't work with that. So when we had the opportunity to relaunch it, we just went back to Brazil. And I think is one of our great hidden jewel cigars out there in the market, like the uh, the cigar you're smoking. Now, when you say Brazil, are, are we talking? Are we talking Arapiraca, Cubra, Marafina, uh, Marafina, Marafina, Marafina? Beautiful, yeah. 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 When I first started with the company, that was when we had the really big push for Consigliere. Like that was the release. So early on in my employment here, I was doing a lot of events with you and the Consigliere. So that's like all I smoked right when I started. Right. right. Okay, wait, okay, okay. So so you did a lot of events with Rick. So that means you traveled with Rick, right? I did. All right, let's circle back to the theme, travel. You gotta uh -huh. give an interesting travel story with Rick. I think- I was I a know. jewel. I was just a, like- I'm not saying you weren't a jewel, but that doesn't mean that there weren't interesting stories right yeah. don't be so defensive i've traveled with you i know what you can be like i you know, think, I think I, the thing what, that stands I, you know i'll start it i oh, okay. remember i remember traveling with uh uh you know laurel and uh it was the first time i uh, i don't know why we're traveling so far maybe a three hour drive together and that was the first time i really got to know you and your history and what struggles uh, you had to go through uh, to get in the uh, spot that you're in today. And I uh, remember you showing me uh, the stories about I was alone, I was eating peanut butter and jelly sandwich for weeks and weeks, and I was catching buses to, i like, what? I thought you were just born in this silver spoon in your throat. And no, no, it's a, you know, it was a journey. And so that was the first time I really got to know her and uh, my opinion of her. It wasn't bad, it was different because I thought she came from this family, uh, you know, like, not like a rich family, but a well-to-do family, educated, and she said, no, no, that's not my story. Let me tell you my story. And I, I went, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, but I think to a point, like, I mean, it's beneficial, like you grow from it. And now I was actually just telling the guys here at Moose because they bought me a bunch of um, PB&J Uncrustables because they watched behind the van. They're like, oh, you know, you like Uncrustables. And I told them about how you call me, you know, mom at Cigar Fest because I have that PB&J line. And right. now I, I eat it and I was like, oh, man, it's so good. You know, but like I definitely had a different relationship with it, you know, not all that long ago. <laughs> Nice. Um, but yeah, I probably, one of the first things I remember about you is just the way you handled yourself at events and just being like, oh man, this is really cool. Like this guy is the real deal. And, uh, but also that you love to be driven around. Like it had to be, you know, pick Rick up at a certain time, drop Rick off, eat on Rick's schedule. Right. Meaning you don't eat until go 10 where, No, listen, listen, listen. Go listen, where Rick wants to for, eat. For those of you who are watching, forget what you heard. Rick is the diva in this crew. Oh, Pass for, down. for sure. In the best way. Yeah. Do I get a vote? I, I, you know, I, I agree with you guys. I know <laughs> that I, I'm setting in my own ways. The older, you know, Guy in this group, so right. you're, you're, I am set in my ways. You are the elder statesman, it's all good. Rick, can I tell the story of when we were in Pittsburgh when it was raining? Oh, that's a classic, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so, so one time Rick and I are working together in Pittsburgh and our rep, Mark, was already at the account and I don't remember why we were separate. Maybe like he had gone there earlier or something, so Rick and I show up. And it is raining cats and dogs, like just pouring. And Rick's like, I'm not getting out of the car. It's raining way too hard. And I refuse to walk to the door. And I was like, dude, we're only like 10 feet from the door. It's fine. Like, we'll get a little wet. It's not a big deal. He's like, no, we're not going in. And you can't leave the car either because I won't sit out here by myself. And so Mark is calling me and he's like, where are you? I thought you said you guys were going to be here. And I was like, well, you're probably not going to believe this, but we're actually just sitting in the car outside of the shop. And he's like, what? Like, yeah, Rick, we'll get out of the car because it's raining. So Mark comes outside with an umbrella and then walks Rick into the shop with the umbrella. And then I still had to walk in the rain. Oh, wow. 
No, what, what, really, Sean, bro, uh, uh, it's all, uh, all about the hair, bro. <laughs> what? My hair has to take way longer than your hair. What? Yeah, I see, I don't, I don't have that problem yeah. at all. Maybe I could uh, do that, too, so. Oh, That's my God, funny. it was so funny. But, no, I always really enjoyed working with you early on, so. Yeah. Um, all right, so kind of getting a little bit back on topic here. One of the questions I had prepared, because I could literally talk for five hours about the most ridiculous experiences, but like, is there an Uber or a Lyft ride that really stands out in your mind when you were traveling for work, just being like totally off the wall? I haven't had any terrible experiences. I had this one guy for some reason, uh, pick me up from here to go to the airport. And um, I wasn't in a rush. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't, I like to get to the airport, eat, I don't like to rush. Yeah. So I wasn't in a rush. But I don't know if he was in a rush or what. I don't know. But like, like I mean, this guy was speeding, weaving in and out of traffic. And, and I'm kind of in the morning. I'm relaxed. And I, I'll play chess on my phone. I'm trying to relax. But I'm bouncing around, bouncing around. I'm like, hey, Chief, you OK? Like, like it, I was getting scared. And then when you get off of, um, off of 285 on the 85 to approach the airport, there's this sort of raised uh, uh, exit ramp. And it curves pretty steep. And listen to me. I've been taking that curve for almost 20 years now. And this is the first time I thought I was going to see the other side of it. I mean, we were, I mean, scare, and I was, I wanted to slap this guy in the back of his head, but I'm like, you know what? Let me just get to the, to the terminal and get the hell out. And, and that's the only time I've ever ripped the, ripped the, the Uber driver. Cause usually if something goes wrong a little bit. I mean, people are human. I don't like to give them a bad rating and I don't want them to give me a bad rating, but I ripped the shit out of this guy. And I don't know if he had somewhere to go or what, but, it was it was it was it was it was it was a, a pretty uh, intense ride for whatever reason, and I, I didn't tell him, "Hey, I'm late for my flight rush," but he was in a rush, and it was it was scary. Yeah. For me, I I, I think I took uh, maybe three Ubers uh, since I've been traveling because either I have a car or the rep picks me up. So Uber is not uh, one of the great stories. I was with a. a, a a lady driver, and she asked me what I do. And I said, I work for a cigar company. What's one? My husband loves cigars. And I said, well, you know, Joe Cigar. I don't know this. Uh, but my husband loves CAO. Oh, that's awesome. Said, okay, that's good. And so, uh, you, so you instantly you became the man. And he said, she says, I don't know about anything about CAO, but I know my husband wants to meet this blender called Joe. I said, Joe. And so, yeah, this, this guy, is, uh, he's been a, 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 with uh, this company forever, and he got promoted, and uh, he's now in charge of lending, and his name is Joe. I said, uh, no, I don't think Joe. Uh, I'm Ricky, uh, the blender for CEO. No, I've never <laughs> heard of you. <laughs> I said, you know, do me a favor. Uh, when we stop, give me your address, and I'm going to send uh, your husband some cigars, and then uh, send him uh, some cigars. And he says, "Oh, I'm so sorry, you I knew your name from Joe." Yeah, I, I should have, but I knew your name. But I, I, apparently, my wife. I'm so embarrassed. Uh, good, you know. Thank you so much for the cigars. But in her eyes, I was Joe. I was Joe. Okay, that's good. Just, right. just your average Joe. Yeah, just said that. I had, um, see, unlike Sean, I don't ever, I'm not like rushed to the airport, but I really don't allow that much extra time because Milwaukee is a small airport. I mean, legitimately the longest has ever taken me from walking in the door to being at my gate is 12 minutes. So I don't ever have to really allow a ton of time. So I call an Uber and I'm like watching the car, watching the car and it's basically just spinning in a circle, which kind of indicates that they haven't left yet. So I'm calling her. I was like, our, where I live is kind of confusing because it's like a one-way street or it's, it's blocked off, but Uber says you can get through. So I was like, hey, I'm just going to walk over to the credit union. Just pick me up from there instead of coming to my house. And she's like, okay. And then like another 10 minutes later. So now 10 minutes has already elapsed. So we're at like the 20 minute mark. And I'm like, okay, well, do I call another Uber or like, you know, what the hell? So she finally picks me up and she's like, hey, um, I tried to get an apple pie from McDonald's and it was taking forever. So we need to go back through the McDonald's drive-thru and get this apple pie because I already paid for it. And I was like, 
no, like we're not going back through the McDonald's drive through. Like I have to be at the airport. Like now I'm starting to sweat a little bit because you have taken your sweet time getting here. And then the entire ride, she whined that she was hungry. I was like, oh my God, I will give you the dollar for your apple pie. Like, please stop talking to me. Wow. wow. Yeah. I had a guy Did once. She looked like she kidding. really liked pies. I mean, was she like? <laughs> I don't know. And then I had this. I had this one guy who was like, "Oh man, you travel so much. You must get crazy Uber drivers." And I was like, "Yeah, I do." And then he asked me to read the, his homemade poetry that he kept in the back. You know, like the little bin or the little seats. He's like, "Oh, I write poetry." And there's a pen back there. So if you want to like read my poetry and like write commentary, and I was like, "What?" And then another guy, when I was back in the seat, he was like, oh yeah, I've been living in my car the last three months. So you're sitting where I sleep. I was like, cool. I did not need to know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I have not had those experiences. Uh, uh, and, and I think maybe maybe people will be hesitant to share such things with me maybe because I'm, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There was only one time when I was in an Uber where I was like legitimately nervous, like this guy I mean, I take an Uber to the airport literally every week because I live so close to the airport. Like, it's more expensive for me to drive my car and park it in the airport than it is just yeah. for an Uber. And he, like, refused to get on the highway. He refused to take any normal routes. And he kept, like, looping us through these, like, weird residential neighborhoods. I'm like, bro, are we going to the airport or am I getting murdered? <laughs> and I remember just being, like, looking at the doors and seeing if the locks were done and being like, okay, if we're going slow enough, can I tuck and roll out of here? So that was the only time I've ever really been like uncomfortable, but yeah, I, we've had some real, real strange birds, but I mean, I suppose it is what it is. Um, also, I wanted to make mention that we are giving away one of the really cool Macanudo 50th anniversary ashtrays tonight. So if our viewers who are watching want to ask any questions or make any comments, um, basically your name will be randomly drawn from that question and comment pool. So if y'all want to participate, gives you a better chance to win this ashtray. Also, Rick said someone, Rick, uh, someone said that you have to go find whatever local fried chicken place there is. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but I think uh, Mr. Garcia had a great question about uh, what we prefer lighting cigars with torch, cedar, match, and all that. So that's a great question for everybody to answer. Yeah. Uh, soft flame for me is the best you know, lighting device for me. And so I love the uh, old uh, Jeep lighters. Okay. Uh, that I carry uh, every, I think torches are great uh, lighting tool, but they tend to uh, really uh, burn your tobacco and you yeah, have that right. two or three puffs that's going to be bitter. And so I think- Well, that, that, the, the trick to that, and people don't understand, is when you use a torch, the mm -hmm. flame should not touch the cigar. Right, right, right. The right, heat right, should right, light right. the cigar. The, the heat from the flame, not the actual flame. Exactly. Uh, because you char the foot of the cigar, you're right, man. It's just going to be, you're going to have to work through that that, that sort exactly. of dense, charred, uh, 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 you know, flavor for a, a quarter inch. Which is so funny because being here at Moose today, we were doing some videos on like, you know, lighting etiquette and do's and don'ts and stuff. And that was basically what I harped on in every video. I'm like, do not stick the cigar in the flame. <laughs> You know, and it's the same thing for matches, soft flame torch. The hottest part of the flame is at the top of that, um, or the hottest part is at the top of that flame. So that's where you want to keep your cigar. Not only do you not burn it that way, but it's also a way more efficient manner of lighting that cigar. I tend to use soft flame for the most part. Um, I travel with either, it's a Zippo, but it's not like the standard wheel and flint Zippo. It's like an old butane Zippo. Um, or I have a DuPont that I'll travel with sometimes because I can get soft flames through TSA, usually without incident. And they just, for me, they're super consistent. Yeah. But uh, to, you know, for Benji to me, the best technique is what the Cubans started to use in the 1800s and uh, 1900s, uh, cedar. And yeah. why they started to use cedar, because a book of matches in Cuba was about uh, three cents a book. And so some of these cigars took uh, half a book to, because you're wasting and went out. And so cedar doesn't interfere of any flavor at, at all. So cedar is the best, but you have to have the patience because yeah. cedar is not going to light your cigar really quickly. So yeah. cedar is the number one technique 
for a pure cigar smoker to use. Uh, yeah. But I would say soft grain for me. And then uh, I agree with uh, Sean. If you're going to use a torch, put that torch down and let that flame kind of leap up to mm -hmm. your cigar. Yeah. That's interesting. I knew that like, you know, matches and cedar was kind of the most pure way of lighting your cigar. I personally just don't do it because it's more steps than I kind of want to take to light a cigar. <laughs> but I didn't know the origin of it, of like using one match to light the cedar so you have more longevity from that box of matches. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. And then uh, somebody was asking when, Rick, you are going to come out with your own cigar, but you have your Rick Rodriguez blends for your event only stuff. Those still exist, right? The Ricky they Pack. Do. They do. And you know what? Uh, every blend that we work on, uh, you know, is a part of us. And so Sean and Laurel, every blend is, you know, we can name it the Sean or Laurel or Ricky, but you know what? Uh, we believe that uh, the name doesn't attach to that cigar. And so uh, that's the reason they, they, when you see a cigar made for an athlete or a star, it's kind of spelled sometimes because yeah. uh, if you look at uh, uh, Rocky and uh, like uh, uh, Sheffield, right? if you're in Boston, you're not going to smoke that cigar. Oh, he played for the Yankees. I hate that. Yeah, so cool. uh, I think that for me, uh, you know, every cigar, you know, there's two cigars right now on the market. Session and Pallone that have, I might have my name on it. Uh, okay. But at the end well, of the day, uh, every cigar, what's that? I didn't know Pallone did. I knew Session did. No, Pallone has it on the front of the band. Mm -hmm. Session only has it in the back of the band. Okay. Yeah, cool. so. I didn't know that either. It's pretty yeah, cool. so, but, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, every cigar that we have anything to do with is because we've been a part of that vote, and they're going to look at us, Sean, Laura. And so we think it's B, you think it's C, it's up to you. What do you want? Mm -hmm. And so uh, sometimes they win, sometimes I win, uh, because we're all just trying to give you the best cigar we can. But every cigar that uh, we have anything to do with is part of us. So we can definitely win cigar, uh, the Rick or Sean or Laura. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Sean, you have your event only Cohiba cigars as well. And that has your, I know it's Silencio, but does it have your name on it? Yeah, my signature. That, that's okay. the only Cohiba that actually has my signature on it. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought, but I wasn't entirely sure. Um, we have another question asking if we're going to sit down and really relax and kind of focus on the cigar, what would be our pairing of choice for a drink? You know, for me, I guess it would just depend on the mood. If I want a drink, it'd probably be like a fuller bodied red. Um, if I don't want to drink, it's usually tea. Yeah, for me, it's uh, it's usually if if, I, if I'm pairing something that's not uh, tea, uh, which I drink a lot of sweet tea. Yeah. During the day with cigars, but if it's not that, then it's usually a bourbon of some kind. Tonight, it's uh, it's the Uncle Nearest 1856. But I drink a lot of bourbon. Uh, that's that's my pairing of choice for cigars. Uh, nothing against scotches, but once when I got into whiskeys or brown liquor whiskeys. Um, I guess 15, 16 years ago at this point, I just gravitated to bourbons because it was it's a sweeter mash, 51% corn, and it was a little easier to navigate. I got turned off a few times when I when I stumbled onto some of the scotches that didn't really really appeal to me, and uh, the peat just kind of um, just kind of you know turned me off with with some scotches in general. Um, I have found some over the years that I do like, and I, I like them overall, but. Yeah. Once I just started navigating the world of bourbon, it was just a lot easier, and I settled into bourbons, and um, and um, that that's that's my preferred uh, choice, and uh, I do it straight. Uh, I will do a Manhattan from time to time, but that's it uh, as far as mixed drinks for me. Uh, typically, I like it straight, maybe with one little small cube just to open it up a little bit and add a, a, a tad of chill. But bourbon is my thing. Okay, all right. And then do you, camera. you guys are traveling on the road and stuff. And if you're at the hotel or if you're at a, a place by yourself, do you tend to drink on your own or are you more of a social drinker? Cause like, I don't ever drink on my own. Like, I don't either. Travel. I don't either. Well, when I'm traveling, no, but you know, like, uh, like, like now, now, I mean, I, the, the game is coming on tonight. So I have a couple buddies over, uh, but if there weren't, I would be here and, and I would have a, a shot with, uh, with the cigar by myself, but on the road, not really, because once I get back to the, you know, from at an event, 
um, right. you know, and, 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 and there, there's liquor there. I may take a, a sip or two, uh, but I don't drink a lot during events. Um, I don't drink a lot, period, but even less during events. But I would take a sip of something at an event. But once I get back to the hotel, man, I'm, 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 I'm done consuming anything aside from water and, and, and some trail mix or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Do you guys have any like weird travel hotel or airport hacks that you guys do? I know Rick, you have your thing with your shoes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, for me, my hack would be like, if I need to steam clothes, I just put it in the, <laughs> I put it in a closed bathroom with the, the temperature all the way up. But yeah, I do that all the time. I mean, you know, cause I'll, my mind in particular, my clothes are obviously bigger. So you get a suit, man, and it, it's crumpled up. Yeah. The perfect thing. Just turn that shower on full tilt, hang right. your suit in there, you should, yep. it, it, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. What's the worst flight you've ever been on? Like, was it a person? Was it weather? Was it just like crazy delays? Like, is there anything that stands out in your mind just being like, oh my God, this is the breaking point for me. I literally never want to do this again. The worst yeah. flight I've ever been on was my very first flight to Nicaragua back in 2006 on Taka Airlines. Okay. Does that it even is, still exist anymore? I don't know. It probably shouldn't, but uh, <laughs> it was... <laughs> I mean, I, I swear, they were probably livestock on the plane. It was just, it was, it was the worst, man. It was the worst. It was the worst. It was the worst. And as soon as the, 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 the plane hits the tarmac, everybody stood up. You know, like, you're, not supposed, to, you're yeah. not supposed to be standing on an active runway. Everybody stood up. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with these people? They're all lining up to use the bathroom oh, yeah. before they get off the plane. So, okay. so you can't go anywhere because you know, if you got, you know, a couple hundred people on the plane, surely not everybody's made their way to the pisser before it's time to deplane. So yeah. you're sitting there so that everybody can get a turn at the outhouse before you, before you get off the plane. It was that that's that's the worst flight I've ever been on. Okay. Yeah. For me, uh, it's not a worst flight. It's the uh, the flight that uh, I was going to Seattle. And I made it all the way to Denver, and Patrick, the local rep, called me and say it's snowing sideways. We're going to cancel the event. So I don't know what to do, but we don't need you. And so uh, I had uh, a flight. I called my wife and said, possibly, can you get me a flight home tonight? And she says, oh, there's a 12 o'clock flight. So I get, I think I got to Denver about uh, their time about five, and then I had some uh, uh, dinner and a bowl of chili, a, a, a beer, and I flew home. So okay. I went all the way to Denver for a bowl of chili, a chili. <laughs> and a glass of beer, and I flew you're, you're home. Like, you're like Elvis, I, man. You're yeah, like Elvis. I, I felt that like a great I, chili. Yeah, yeah, I felt like a Jay Z, like. You know, with it, a chili in Denver is good. Let's go there, you know? But he has a private plane. <laughs> so. That's oh. yeah. yeah, actually, one of my worst flights was going down to the factory. The last time I was there, I was going to the Dominican, Rep Dominican Republic with Steve and the social media company that I'm at right now. And we were going down to do some stuff, like, in the factories and the fields. And we got to Atlanta, and there were – maintenance issues with the plane so we couldn't leave and I had I remember having to take two layovers because there's nothing from Atlanta to Santiago so yeah, I had, uh, yeah, and I couldn't no go flights. and I couldn't go from Milwaukee to New York for some reason to make this flight so I had to go from Milwaukee to Atlanta to LaGuardia to Santiago you were on Delta we were on Delta and yeah. I got super super delayed in Atlanta because we had maintenance issues and we were on the tarmac legitimately for four hours. So they were like, okay, well, we are going to get you on the next flight. You'll be there late, but we're going to get you there, right? So um, I get to New York, and then the freaking jet bridge is broken. And there are no other gates that can take our plane. So I have been on this plane now for six hours. Hmm. And now they're telling me that we can't deep plane because the jet bridge is broken. So we oh. went yet another hour to get this jet bridge up and running and we finally get off and like everybody is just you know the sigh of relief right so i'm waiting for my other flight to come in that flight is delayed and the whole time i'm like texting steve our brand manager for mac and you know, actively I'm like i don't know what's happening but like i don't think i'm going to get there tonight 
And I'm like calling Delta. They're like, oh, no, no, it's going to happen. We're going to get you there. And the flight kept getting more and more delayed and more and more delayed. And I ended up just having to spend the night um, at a hotel near LaGuardia and take the next flight out in the morning. But, you know, oh. by the time I got to the hotel and then came back to the airport to take my flight, I had gotten like three hours maybe of sleep. And then I had yeah. to go like do all day of like shooting right. and working in the fields and stuff. And it was just brutal. I forgot to mention that I've had two instances where I've had to sleep in, in an airport. Mm. No way. I've never yeah. did that. It never. It was yeah. the same instance going to, uh, uh, going to, um, and I guess I could have left, but I was just so, I was so, so upset. Uh, and I wanted to be out on the first thing smoking. And it was in uh, Miami airport. I missed the connection and, um, and just ended up just like crashing there. We're waiting for the first plane. And I had to actually, uh, I was going to Santiago, but I ended up uh, uh, getting a flight to go to Santo Domingo and, and had a car pick me up and drive me up. Uh, but the first mm -hmm. time I did it is when I was just getting started in the cigar business. I was broken in Cuda Brown. So, uh, so I flew to Miami on Delta and my flight uh, for Taka was like first thing in the morning out of mm -hmm. Miami. So, yeah, so I crashed in the airport. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. You, haven't, you haven't lived until you slept in an airport, man. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's it's not. No, I would I I would that's, charge that, his that's, company. That's not on the list. That should be on the bucket don't care. list. I don't care. But uh, you know, uh, for me, uh, the uh, the story that uh, the embarrassing story. Uh, I re remember catching a flight in Atlanta to go to Chicago, and I read my seat as B uh, thirteen. And so I thought that was the gate number. So I have my earphones. I'm in B13. I'm waiting and waiting. I'm like, There's nobody catching this flight with me. And uh, I hear they call the last flight. I look, oh my God. B13 is my seat number. <laughs> I'm in, you know, and you know, in Atlanta, uh, you know, Atlanta. Yeah. I'm, I'm on F and you, uh, I missed that flight. I missed oh, that flight. Oh, no. Wow. And it's like, but, it's so frustrating because it's completely avoidable. But like, you know, right. everybody flubs. But it's like, you're not only did you miss it, but like you missed it because of your own <laughs> yes, yes. nonsense. But no, listen, it, it happens. It, it, if you travel so much, every now and then there's going to be a glitch in the matrix. Yeah. You're going to yeah. do something, just some bonehead thing where you miss it. it, it it's like, if you travel okay. as much as we do, at, at some point, you're going to do something like that. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I can't believe, I mean, I've been with this company now, you know, four years, right? And I've been traveling actively for my position for about three and a half on planes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I have yet to, I have yet to miss a flight. Mm -hmm. I've had flights canceled and flights delayed. Um, but thankfully, I haven't had any issues. Like I've definitely overslept before where I'm just like throwing everything in and, you know, hustling as fast as I can and, you know, running through the airport, man. I don't know. Sometimes I, I, if I know it's going to be tight, I look at my shoes and I was like, these shoes are not going to be conducive for a hoofing it across Atlanta. Uh, but the best the to day, me is, yeah. is when you're getting ready to get on a flight and it's like it, it, they, they, they've oversold the flight by like 375 people and they start asking for volunteers. And, and, and I never like, oh, we'll give you a, a, a I flight. I don't care. Whatever. I never done I that. I don't care. But listen, when they started offering those Amex uh, uh, yeah. cash cards, Really, I wouldn't do it. I, I wouldn't do it, Dude. but I just want to get home. Uh, it happens, knock on wood, I don't think I have had cancellations or tarmac situations maybe five times. Yeah. And I have flown 3,000 flights, 4,000 yeah. flights. So I am very lucky that I hear these guys, oh, this is the second time in this month that that really it yeah. doesn't happen i've never I think, lost I think that any luggage a lot. yeah i've never have you ever lost luggage no i've never lost any i luggage. have never no. never no, i have had luggage early. that didn't make my flight I, i've had that happen oh, yes but yeah. always yeah. i have two times always going home so i don't yeah. care you know so never going there i have lost anything so kudos to these airlines that they, because yeah. they get ripped apart all the time oh the baggage laws cancellations tarmac bro no well, and i think that we all primarily fly delta correct 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, unless I'm going to a hub airport where it doesn't make sense to go through a layover, like, you know, if I need to go to Houston or something, it makes more sense to take United direct. But like, I will say that they're pretty good about just being, I, I feel like they're one of the better business traveler airlines. Right. I think so. I mean, I'm, yeah, obviously this, I I mean uh, for Delta yeah. is the best. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're strictly for business mm -hmm. uh, flyers. Are they? Yeah. Are I used, I used to hear a nightmare. Flyers about US Air and American and I, and I never had any of those issues. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to their credit, God, I remember one time going out to our Richmond office and my flight going into Detroit got delayed because there was maintenance issues at our gate. And so the plane couldn't leave our gate. And because it was like rush hour, there were no other gates to get the plane in. So like we were there at the airport, but we couldn't get off the plane. And I remember oh. running to my connection and they're like, Oh, are you Laurel? And I was like, yeah, they're like, oh, we've been waiting for you. And I was like, I guarantee that any other airline would not have done that for me. <laughs> the next flight to Richmond was like eight hours later. So no, I, I love I love Delta. And it's cool. Like when I when I go to the airport, I'll, I'll check in at the airport, like where I'm eating, blah, blah, blah. And and and, and Delta would like they'll retweet, you know, like uh whatever I just I just because I'm there all, you know, what well, at a time I'll there yeah. all the time. You live in First, yeah. uh, perfect situation because you are connecting one flight all the time, going yeah. home. I, I, I can I've go always had that. Yeah, it's amazing. Anywhere. Aside from Santiago, yes. whenever, whenever I go yeah. out to the factory in the DR, it's I have amazing. to fly from here to, to, to New York. Then to exactly. So Even in to. Chica uh, Seattle, you have one flight, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the reason I changed from, I was united when I began, but I was saying to myself, United is always going through Houston. That's a two-hour flight. And if I just change my airlines to Delta, so it's an hour of flight. So yeah. that's the reason I changed to Delta. Sean and yeah. I actually ran into each other at the airport. It was like a Sunday yeah, yeah. morning. And I was coming home from something over the weekend. And, and you I was heading out. Yeah. Something, and we were just ships in the night passing. I was like, Sean? <laughs> right. Yeah. That was funny. That was funny. Yeah. yeah. It was funny. Um, yeah. And I just want, when you guys were talking about the bump thing, like I would totally take the bump because I'm all about those airline miles, but it never happens to me when I'm going home. It always happens when I'm going somewhere and then I can't take it. No, I remember, I remember when, when I got a, I got a, I got a dose of reality. We, we, I don't know where we were going. We're all going to the same meeting and, 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 uh, and, I was waiting to get on and, and, you know, I was looking at the upgraded list and I was pretty high on the list. So it's, it was a foregone conclusion to me that I was going to get upgraded, but I didn't get upgraded. I got, um, uh, 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 not, um, uh, not first class, but I got the, the, oh, the comfort the, plus, comfort plus, but I didn't get first class. I was like, I didn't get bumped mm -hmm. up. Like, like, like who's flying more than me to get bumped up. Here comes Rick walking up to get on the plane. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was, I was like, excuse you got me. my seat. Are like, you kidding me? Excuse me. You, excuse you come me. to my airport and get my seat. What, what the hell? Yeah. I was, I, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, always amazed. Who's flying more than me that they got bumped up? And here comes Rick. Come, he's come walking up. I remember Wiping Rick, my face from your uh, uh, chicken. I mean, Rick, I you were sure. doing an event in I'm Milwaukee hot. once. And I was coming through Atlanta. And yeah. I knew you were taking a flight to Milwaukee. And I was like, yeah. hey, what is your flight to Milwaukee? And you're like, oh, I'm flying through Detroit or I'm doing this or whatever. And I was like, that seems wrong, but whatever, you know your own schedule. And I no, had gotten no. upgraded and I was sitting down and the seat next to me is empty and nobody's taking and nobody's taking it. I was like, I guarantee I Rick is gonna that. walk on this plane and sit here. And you did. <laughs> <laughs> the last person I want to see to talk to me is you. Are, are, are you, when you fly, are you interested in talking to the person next to you? No. No, no. Very no. rarely. And, and that's not, no. that's not an affront to anybody that's traveling, but it's it like, is you, it. know, you know, you know, I'm so I'm tired. tired. Yeah. yeah. I'm so we tired. We talk all day. Yeah. And now, I'm usually asleep, but, but, but by the time, I mean, oh, I mean, I before the doors close, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if somebody starts talking to me, I'll be polite about it. Like there was one situation where I was flying through Minneapolis and clearly the woman next to me was a very nervous flyer. Like anytime we'd he even hit like the smallest amount of turbulence, like I'd see her grip the handle and she was really, really tense. So I started talking to her to kind of distract her and stuff. And she was really sweet about it. We were landing. She's like, honey, 
I know that you were just talking to me because you were trying to help me. And I just want to say thank you because it really was nice. And I really appreciate you doing that. I was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's an hour flight. Like I'm happy to kind of talk you through this. Like you could tell that it put her mind at ease to not be distracted by the things that were going on on the flight. So, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff I'm happy to do, but if it's a long flight, like if I already have headphones in, if I'm watching a movie, like do not talk to me. <laughs> have you ever been on a flight uh, with a star or somebody, uh, you know, I, you know, I think uh, one flight I was with somebody on the Obama, uh, maybe the secretary of state for Obama. That was the first time I've ever saw somebody, bro, I know you. Yeah. And so I don't see a lot of stars. Yeah, the, the coolest for me, the coolest for me, I worked with, um, who would have been the rep in uh, South Carolina? That, oh, Carolee. Uh, I, I, I worked with Carol Lee and then I had to fly from there to somewhere. So uh, I had to fly out of Myrtle Beach and on the plane with me coming fresh from a performance at the, 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 the arena there were the Temptations. So, oh, that's awesome. So, so, yeah, so Otis Williams is sitting like he's one seat over, one seat behind. And I'm not, yeah. I'm trying not to be like a goober, but I mean, this is yeah. Otis Williams, like yeah. the, 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 yeah. the, the founding member and last living original member of the temptation sitting right behind me so it's like i had to talk to him so okay. that was pretty cool yeah and i've had yeah. doc river uh a matter of fact when he uh when he, when he got the job with the boston celtics he literally was sitting right across the aisle from me so we had talked a little bit and that was kind of cool because he's actually watching film so i'm you know, kind of peeking over and you know so uh that's yeah, very so, cool yeah 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 the only Kenny Smith, I've ever time. Found somebody was no? uh nancy pelosi wow. okay um wow. but yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe, and I just wasn't really paying that much attention. I agree. Actually. I agree. I agree. I remember being in Atlanta once, and there was this kid. He was probably maybe like 10 or 12 years old, and he was so cute and so naive. And he was like, I'm so excited to be in Atlanta. This is a major airport. We're going to see all of these celebrities on planes. And I was like, I hate to break it to you, kid. You're not going to see yeah. a celebrity yeah. on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. We have had a couple questions build up. Okay. So I'm going to circle into the... Uh, the chat here and see what's up. Okay, so we have um, Brantley from Facebook wants to know, what would your advice be for a smaller cigar shop to grow in this ever-changing market? And um, also, what is your go-to place to eat on the road? So let's start with the small shop, um, like what we would recommend to kind of like help grow the cigar business. And then I guess if you have any sort of like food destinations that you try to well, seek out. Well, I think Laura, you're the only one that has really actual real world experience working in a retail environment. So I, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to punt to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess my recommendation would be to make sure you're just carrying a good balance because I understand that, you know, some people lean more towards major manufacturers like us. Some people lean more towards boutique, which is great as well. You know, everybody's taste is different, but I think it's keeping the right balance. Um, especially if you have like a walk-in humidor and you're not able to really go in there with the customers and like be able to like actively help sell everything. Um, just make sure you're having something for everybody, um, if that's helpful at all. So just a, a good balance of boutiques, major manufacturers and everywhere in between. Big, big for thing me, uh, yeah. for me is, yeah. is you can't, you can't as, a, as a retailer, you can't smoke, uh, well, you can smoke, but you're not going to smoke and like everything in your humidor. Yeah. You, should, right. you don't have to like yeah. everything in your humidor. You have to like having a selection that, that, that attracts a broad audience. So don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't just bring cigars in uh, just because you've personally fallen in love with them. Yeah. Of course. Or don't don't bring something humidor, in because you don't like it. Yeah. You're bringing, in, you're bringing them in to sell them, not smoke them. Mm -hmm. right. so, yeah. For me, it's just a treat every customer like he's their first and last customer of that day uh, with respect and honor. Because, and don't worry about what XYZ across the street or down the street is doing. Just focus on your shop, your consumers, and make them feel that every dollar they pull out of their pocket Thank you so much. Yeah. There's so many other shops where you can spend your money. Thank you so much for spending your money yeah. with me because they'll bypass other shops because they're bigger, but they don't get treated with yeah. the respect that they want. Yeah. So just respect every customer and then start to pick up 
are are you gathering games? Okay, every you know Monday night I have a host. All right, serve them a sandwich, serve them some peanuts, anything to keep these guys in your shop. So treat them with uh, respect and uh, don't worry about what the other guy's doing because we all know that uh, you can sell a cigar in your shop and down the street they can't give that cigar away. Yeah. yeah. And you so, make a good point, Rick. Relationship. So you want that relationship. You want them to keep coming back. Like, yeah, yeah. make them feel that every time they walk through that door that they are the most important person. All right, all right. Yeah. And you make a good point, Rick. Don't, don't, uh, certainly you want to take pointers for, from other successful shops, but, right. you know, you can't try to create your shop after them. every, I've never been in two shops that have the same vibe and the same culture. Yeah. Every shop is going to develop its own culture and its own vibe. You're in control of what culture you create. But uh, that should be sort of uh, uh, paramount uh, to, to what your shop should be, uh, yeah. as opposed to just sort of mimicking yeah. what you've seen in other shops. I mean, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go. Cool. I was going to say, you know, kind of akin to that. I, you know, I'm at Moose right now, and these guys have worked with all three of us on our mm -hmm. individual brands. And, like, we're all so vastly different in our approach and our personalities, and it all works like i don't want no offense it's not that i don't like you guys but like i don't want to be sean i don't want to be Rick. i agree i, agree. Probably I don't agree. want to be me you know yeah. I agree. So just be yourself be individual to make it work for you and your store yeah yeah, yeah. but uh i l l please let me ask the uh, other question chicken any <laughs> restaurant that serves chicken i want to go there and don't ever take me to Popeyes or Bojangles or talking KFC. Where do you get your local fried chicken? Oh, that's Mammoth Bay or whatever it is. I want to go there. So yeah. fried chicken for me. That's not that's sort of the same thing. Yeah. yeah, it's not necessarily fried chicken, but wherever I'm at, I, I, I want to get local. Uh, taste local. Of the local there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. If I'm going somewhere that's known for barbecue, I mean, I love barbecue, so you best believe that I'm finding barbecue. You know, if I go to New Orleans, I'm eating oysters, I'm eating seafood. It, right. You know, I agree. So, I agree. It, in Texas, it's, I mean, I guess barbecue, but also, you know, steak, I guess, too. They, well, but I don't know. It's just, yeah, finding the sort of like the local fair. And I mean, there's something to be said. I eat a lot of Chipotle. I eat a ton of Chipotle on the road um, right. for lunch, but... I always try to balance it where I'm having like one smaller, less exciting meal and then something that I can really kind of get a feel for the local space. So there's a couple places that I know if I'm going to a market that I've eaten there before, I'm like, oh, I'd really like to go back to this place. But um, for the most part, it's just seeking out something a little bit more local. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any more yeah. questions. We've got a question from Liam asking if we've ever been stopped by airport security because a cigar accessory looked suspicious. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Always lighters. Uh, lighters, and what I do with the lighters that uh, they try to take with. I uh, said, "Can I see that lighter? Do you have a problem with?" I break it. You're not going to light your cigarette with a cigar, a lighter. So I break it and then hand it back. Now you can uh, throw it in that bag, but I, yeah. I'm not going to ever give you a lighter. Oh, look at this! You know beautiful $50 lighter and I'm going to light my cool cigarette with it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not going to do that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. And I've yeah. got uh, caught uh, going to uh, uh, Europe uh, with uh, a lot of cigars and that, that, that was a problem. Yeah. Really? That was a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're only allowed to bring in into Europe uh, 50 cigars. And oh. I had uh, huh. about uh, maybe uh uh, 300 cigars, and so uh, that's, that's, more say, that's a lot. Yeah, but that's they say uh, we right. should charge you taxes. I said these are giveaways, gifts. I'm not going to resell them. And the guy says, uh, "Just go, you know, just go." But I just got caught one time. Yeah. All right. So we have uh, somebody who said um, Joe always gets upgraded on flights. <laughs> And then no. um, he also <laughs> said that he would upgrade all of us if we flew American. Uh, um, and then we've got Mitchell asking, how much crossover do we have with the pipe tobacco lines of our brands? None. Yeah. None. Uh, you know, I really don't know about our pipe business. Uh, I know the CEO uh, does uh, pipe, uh, you know, tobacco, uh, but that is a, uh, another area of uh, responsibility for these guys. So 
Uh, I don't ever get involved in if they want to make a new blend for pipes. They're never going to call me or suggest for me to, what do you think we should do? Uh, so uh, I've yeah. never worked on, on any project for tobacco for pipes. Hmm. All right, let's see. We've got a question from Val here. So I've been working for a cigar company for a few months with no prior knowledge of the cigar industry. I've dove right in and acquired a new passion for cigars. Awesome, Val. Uh, luckily, I did get some tips from you guys during Cigar 101, which was awesome, also great. Um, but what would you recommend uh, to do to inquire more about, about cigar knowledge? Would that be books, YouTube, et cetera? And I know, I think we've touched on this in the past, but like Cigar, cigar World, world. Is a great resource. Cigar World, Cigar yeah. World, yeah. There's so much information of what we do, how we do it. And not like you, you said, uh, Laurel, uh, two or three weeks ago, I tend to think it's all about CL or uh, Mekinu or Kui. It is a, 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 a plethora of uh, knowledge uh, that we're sharing. So go yeah. to Cigar World and start to read. But there's so, so many books out there. But uh, the one-on-one, when you meet their rep, uh, talk to the rep. Uh, when you have the opportunity to meet us or some other manufacturers, bend their ears because you're in the business to sell cigars and that is a key for us. So that we're gonna spend more time with you than we would spend in with a, just a, a stand because we know the value that you hold in your hand. So you're gonna recommend our cigars. So uh, talk to our reps and uh, talk to the manufacturer and go to Cigar World because Cigar World can give you to A to Z all yeah. the information you need to know. And like you said, it's not just our stuff. It's articles, interviews from every brand. It's human yeah. or maintenance. And reviews. Content. And reviews. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Chat groups and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it really is. Smoke. Smoke a lot of different stuff. So yeah. you said. I agree. I agree, Sean. I agree with you. And with even uh, the, the, the lines that you don't think you like or don't like. Yeah. You have to smoke and say, you know what? I don't enjoy this, but Bob that comes in every day, this is a cigar. It's harder to sell that cigar to Bob if you, Bob is gonna say, have you smoked it? Yeah, no. So how do you wanna recommend it to me? Bob, I smoked it, I didn't like it personally, but I know it's your palate. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring up, you talked about book just a minute ago. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I was having a conversation with Ernest last week because we're gonna, kind of going over some Mac stuff. So Ernest is our tobacco buyer and he is the tobacco guru, like anything about anything tobacco related, Ernest knows. And he is actually writing a book. So I'm very excited to read that. I think it's going to really? be super interesting. Really? Yeah, yeah. And so like all, but more like technical, which I find to be cool. So it's not just about like cutting, lighting, human right, organic, right, right, like right. the technicalities of going about making cigars and like growing the tobacco and all of the sort of ins and outs from seed to cigar. So like, I think that's going to be super cool. Nice. So you're, you're talking about Cigar 101. That book is uh, the master degree. Uh, one or uh, you know one fifteen. It's just amazing of, of the knowledge that he has yeah. that he's willing to share with each of us mm -hmm. every day we uh, talk to him. Oh my God! I just had a conversation with him last week because I'm starting a new video series, um, right. and I wanted to get some more like in depth information. And I kind of approached it. I'm like, you know, I have some questions that I want to ask you, but I kind of just don't know what I don't know. And we were legitimately on a Zoom call for like three hours. And I was like, this is so interesting. Like, I never knew this stuff. Like, it's just, he is a fountain of knowledge. And yeah. I feel bad keeping you here. But like, can I ask yeah. you more questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's a, you I'm know sure what? The, no, he, yeah, the he, beauty he, of he, work. He keeps yeah. out on it. Yeah. Yeah, the beauty of working with General Cigar is the, the amount of people that we can reach out to ask a question and I have never experienced, maybe you guys, uh, you know what, nah, no, I'm not going to share that knowledge with you. Everybody's so willing to, uh, really, you're interested in how we uh, ferment or work with a filler? Mm -hmm. The filler. Yeah, I am. And yeah. so, uh, Ernest, uh, I, I, I guarantee I would read that book from start to finish. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I'm very okay. much looking forward to it. 
Um, I know we are kind of out of time here. So somebody was asking before I finish up with my final question, who is leading in our fantasy league? Uh, you don't really need to know that. <laughs> Nobody. But... Nobody's leading. What? Not Sean or Rick. Leading. For that matter. Okay. Joe. Joe is leading. Joe, Joe is leading. Oh. Joe is I leading. Just, I just beat uh, Sean. I, I That's crazy. Even... Beat me by a half a by... point. How does that happen? Uh, half... How, you... How did it happen, bro? How did that happen? We should uh, be half... tied. We should be tied. I beat uh, John last night. I think a a, a one eleven point ninety two to one eleven point four two. Yeah, <laughs> I am comfortably in the middle of this league. I am not losing, but I'm not winning. I'm like halfway. Yeah, <laughs> but to really share the the you know the behind the scenes, I only wanted to beat three guys: Sean, Laurel, and Gary. Yep. So far, you're winning, but you know the season is young. The season. Uh, is young. Yeah, 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 yeah. My yeah. wheels are falling off. It's like, you know, watching the bus go down the street with uh, all the kids, and the wheel is wobbling. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. <laughs> it's just watching this accident happen. But I, yeah, I know I, I, I am I the I champion. I, I think I got. A I shot. am the champion of the ambassadors. And you, that you, is, you, yeah. you, you are the Lord of the Flies. That's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're, we'll finish this conversation up okay. next. And then if there's anything that you guys have questions about, feel free to put it in the comment section. You know, we can definitely answer it next week. But if but you everybody have, that has a question is going to be entered. Either yes. we didn't answer that question, you're going to be entered into the, the giveaway. Action. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you had to get stuck in any airport for two days, like you got snowed in, what airport would you choose? Wow. Uh, Chicago. Chicago. Oh, God. O'Hare is the worst. I love their God, hot dogs. God, O'Hare has got I love awful. their hot dogs and the uh, uh, popcorn. Nathan's it's hot a, dogs? That's, that's it's easy not, for Nathan, me, It's not Nathan. That's uh, a, a New York. It's not Nathan. Hartsville. Yeah. Hartsville. That's easy. Hartsville. Easy. Well, you could walk home from there. Well, but 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 you didn't say I could walk home. If I have to be stuck yeah. and I can't leave, you're like stuck, it, stuck. It, it, it has to be hard school. Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought that one too, but I think just the sheer amount of people who are always in Atlanta. If I chose one, it would be Detroit. Detroit, just, you know what? Not it's, my favorite airport. It's, amazing. it's a a mall. It's a mall. Oh, Detroit's too. amazing. The food is great. The lounge is great. It's super open. They've got massage <laughs> places. They've got cars. Times, so I, it's I a great, a uh, airport, great so, yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Detroit's great. And don't Tampa forget about Tampa. Tampa was just uh, rated the uh, number one business airport in uh, the U.S. <clears throat> Tampa. Uh, because it's so easy to get in and out. And the food is okay. But it's b b more about convenience. Yeah. yeah so. You don't eat anyway, so it's fine. Or do you eat at the airport? No. Uh, in Tampa, I always pick up a Cuban sandwich from Columbia. Okay. Uh, to fly out, with good. thank God, uh, when I take my flight for uh, Delta, that hub uh, is uh, the Columbia restaurant. So the okay. girl, girls, when I approach them, they're already ordering the Cuban sandwich to go and That's the awesome. Coke to go. Yeah. That's so awesome. I yeah. remember when we were flying out of Buffalo, we ordered wings, and then you got additional wings to bring home. And I was like, "You're gonna fly with two dozen wings and smell buffalo sauce this entire time?" And, 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 and can I tell you how disappointed I was with the buffalo wings in Buffalo? Really? Oh, bro, you didn't go to the right place. Yeah, there are some really good buffalo wings in Buffalo. I, I, I did enjoy the beef on wet, though. I, I really like the beef on wet. But the you, wings, you, eh. You're buying Bob's uh, fucking story. It's too salty. That's too salty. <laughs> okay, the beef on wet is really good, though. I'll give you that. Yeah. Too salty. Okay. Okay. This Depends on where you go. Fun. We will continue this next week. Thank you guys all you guys. for joining. I love you guys. I miss you so much. Sean. I'll see you, you uh, uh, next week. Sounds All right, good. Guys. Have a good, have a good week. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. Thanks for logging in. Bye, bye. Thank bye. you.